What up, man? It's the one only DJ Holiday, the commission God in the building. And listen, when you're in the UK, you got to rock with Media Spotlight UK, man. Definitely doing it big. Holiday season, we work and you watch. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are here once again for Media Spotlight UK and we are here with yes. the guy that is taking summer all year round yeah. and I wish I could be like you so you could be constant holidays. It's DJ Holiday. How yeah, are you, sir? Thank you for having me. How are you doing? I'm not too bad. I'm not too bad. Uh, how are you sure. finding London so far? How's it treating you? Well, I've only been here for a couple of hours and uh, I haven't gotten any sleep, but uh, it, it's, you know, it's working, it's fun and I'm appreciating the experience. So I'm excited. It's a great feeling there. You know, take my brand and, and move it this far. And, you know, I'm a, a kid from the east side, man, from Atlanta. Uh, awesome. And Gucci was, you know, dreaming about shit like this. So <laughs> um, now, the most important thing before we go into anything else in this yes. interview, um, I stalked out your Instagram just a little bit, <laughs> and I see that you're on a Dove Smash vibe. I saw your Dove Smash that you was with your daughter, and yeah. he was doing a crying thing, and I was like, nah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I saw that the other day. Did you get a chance to see my version of it? No, I didn't see it. Nah, see that, it? okay, you know what, I'll Is get it? to see, I'll yeah. show you right now, yeah. I still love you. I think it, nobody can fuck that up. It's, it's funny. Oh, Either we're going way, in now. We're going no, in now. It's, it's, it's funny as hell. Either way, oh. you go. It's, it's hilarious. So, who do you think was much better, yours or mine? Let's be real. Well, I, don't don't be biased it, now. I'm going to give it to me because my daughter oh. was in it. My daughter's okay. adorable. So. Obviously, you've got a story coming up as being a DJ, so tell us briefly of how you got started and how you got to um, now. I want to say I'll take it back to, uh, um, you know, college. Um, I was out there, you know, I had full, full football scholarship in uh, Fort Valley State to so, uh, college out there in Georgia. And um, basically what happened was, um, I, you know, I, I'm a party guy. You know, I, I, I was blessed to, to have a, a four-bedroom apartment yeah. um, my freshman year. And three of the guys that lived with me in that apartment got expelled, and one had a baby and just said, fuck school. Oh, dear. And the guy who leased it to us, he let me keep it. So I just threw house parties. Mm. And, and then it got to a point where I threw house parties, massive house parties. And then um, the guy who, um, you know, who was letting me throw the parties, we didn't have the music that I wanted. You know, I don't know if you're able to get the music that you want all the time, but we didn't have any of that shit. Like, not new music. It's more accessible now than yeah, it used to be exactly. back Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So that was like 2005 or something like that. So I used to go back and forth to Atlanta, which was like an hour and a half away, and, um, and download music, put it on a CD, come back. I'll play it at the parties and stuff like that. And then it just kind of developed into a thing where I just, I stopped paying people to DJ my house parties and I did it for myself. And, you know, I, I got this um, older guy to teach me how to scratch on 600, on 600s and stuff like that. So it was just, you know, it was a, a grind and, and then it processed into, you know, I just stopped going to football practice. And yeah. then I started going to like radio classes and TV classes and mass communications just took over my life. And yeah. Football was cool and then it was <coughs> like, but damn. Like music and TV and entertainment is so fun. So I think I quit. I um I left school my, my junior year and I had an internship for Bad Boy South. Just hanging up flyers and T-shirts and they'll tell you like I was a little kid that just out there just throwing up flyers and T-shirts for Diddy and wow, some other people. Hard. Yeah, man. And then um I got an opportunity to DJ a party and me and these other young guys met and we started our own company called Plus Blue Entertainment. We threw some of the hottest wicked parties ever and, <laughs> and it just got bigger and bigger and bigger and then kind of developed into the mixtape stuff. All right, awesome. Well, I mean, you've learned from the best. Yeah. The creme de la creme, so we say. So yeah. you had a DJ Drama, a DJ Clue, yeah. DJ Flex. Uh, those are huge names that are grinded just like yourself to elevate where, you, you yeah. know, where they got to. Um, what's the best advice that they've ever given you to push up? Well, Drama, um, you know, Drama, I, I could say was mostly my, my, my biggest influence because when I was a young guy, I interned for him and, um, and a couple other people uh, for affiliate radio, um, you know, and that was just getting coffee, I was getting, you know, food, that was, I didn't give a fuck, I just wanted to be there. You just wanted to do yeah, it. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> so um, just to be, watch drama, because when I was in college, I listened to all DJ drama mixtapes, and, you know, I didn't want to be exactly like him, but I wanted to 
I was like, yo, how much do you get paid to DJ and yeah. do parties? And yeah. so he was like, and I was like, holy fucking shit. <laughs> like, so it's I not want, an exact figure, you get a rough that. figure? No? No, because I just, no, $1,000 to me back then was oh, wow. like, holy shit. Like, that was crazy. So <laughs> I, I, I wanted to do it. I wanted to try it. And I, and I you know, I, I worked and I grinded and I met Gucci. And I was like, yo, this, let's do this blueprint right here. You see how drama and T.I. are cool and Jeezy or whatever, or, and, and Clue, even Clue. When I, when I grinded to get to New York and I met Clue and, and I talked to Flex and all those guys just encouraged me to, to keep pushing my brand because it was like your brand. I hear it a lot in Atlanta, da, 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 da. So. It just was a, a process where I just had to keep working, man. But I'm, just, I'm excited that, you know, it's, it's being taken. It's been taken so far. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're quite a diverse character as well. Like, you, you know, you're, you're a mixtape DJ, you're a club DJ, you're yeah. a radio personality. You do it all. I'm yeah. surprised you don't do anything else. I'm surprised you're not the president of the United I can States yet. Too. Oh, you, oh yeah. see, I that, I that's an exclusive. I haven't even heard that. I, okay, you could, can, okay. No, funny I, with I, that. Can't, <laughs> I can't, I can't joke. <laughs> Um, what would you advise for upcoming talent that have been in the same position as you to succeed in the industry like that? Um, just to, you know, find your own lane and, um, and be original. Um, I don't think I've tried to be like anybody else. You know, I push myself to the limit to try different things. And, um, you know, I, think, I don't think I've ever turned away any under, underground artists because every person that's huge right now, mm. those guys were in front of me like, I mean, you having a conversation. I remember the first time Waka Flocka played me his mixtape and was like, yo, I think I want to rap. And we was like, you're crazy, why? And he was mm. like, yo, this is some crazy crunk shit. Yeah. So we tried that. I remember the first time, uh, Young Thug was the guy who wrote Blunts yes. in the studio. Yes. Um, the Migos were the guys who just, they were three little kids like, hey, we robbed some guys yesterday. <laughs> oh, you wow. Know, some shit like that. So wow. it was just... You know, it's a process. You never turn anybody away, man. Mm. And, and just be original, like I said, and push yourself to, to be that next one, man. Don't, okay. don't ever take no for an answer because a lot of people turned away from me. Uh, you know, a lot of nights, I, you know, people, you know, oh, I got you. I'm going to turn you up. I'm going to do this for you. Mm. Just do that shit for yourself, man. Create your own lane because a lot of these guys now, they ask me, like, oh, how do they, how do I, da 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 da. And I'd be like, I don't know, shit. Be original. Just, you know, do your own thing. Do your own thing. Now, you mentioned Waka Flocka. Um, we interviewed him two years ago at the Wireless yeah. Festival, and yeah. he's a crazy motherfucker. Yeah, I'll tell yeah, you that, that much for this. <laughs> There's so of, much a character. Of, a lot of drunken nights for me. <laughs> I was gonna ask actually, like, since you've worked with him, have you got like a funny story that, like, thinking, wow, like, did he just do that? Like, oh uh, shit, oh, uh, come funny. on, you must have something. I got some, I got some bad ones because I know he's married <laughs> now, uh, and I got some, uh, what, some of that won't push him out. Oh, of yeah, I, I got a story, I got a story. All right, cool, uh, cool. One time we was uh, performing, uh, in, um, I think we was in, um, uh, the Bahamas. Right. It was just me and him. Like we, we was out there and like his mom and uh, a couple of family members. But you know we were out there get a check and it was this crazy ass party. He just, you know they were just turned the fuck up and we was out there turned off talking on shit on the mic and he was performing his songs and we had bottles of champagne. We was pouring them and this guy he pushed his girlfriend out the way so we could pour the champagne in his uh -uh. mouth. He's like fuck her. I wanted it. Who was like, no. Okay. So, <laughs> so I mean, it just shows, goes to show you what people do. Wow. They do, they do he wild He just didn't shit, give a man. fuck. Did yeah, they, they just really? to be a part of an experience. It's crazy, <laughs> man. Um, well, I wanted to talk briefly as well um, about, I wanted to get your thoughts on Iggy Azalea. Um, one of the most talked about female artists, especially with the controversy yeah. with the, in the hip hop community. Um, she recently stopped her Twitter uh, just a week ago. Now management are taking over. It's too much yeah, yeah, yeah. going on She's in her life. Spoken, yeah. How do you rate her success knowing the stigma of her being a female Australian white rapper with a southern tone? What's your thoughts on her um, on a DJ perspective? You know, I always knew Iggy was going to blow. Um, I was the first actually to interview her in Atlanta. Sweet. I think I gave her her first radio interview. Uh, T.I. brought it to me. And um, you know, he was telling me like this Australian chick. We took her to the club. We hung out with her. She's a cool, down to earth person. Now, I can pretty much think that uh, you know the pressure that she has to deal with from being a white Australian rapper, mm. they're not going to accept her that much. But at the same time, you know, she's going to get all those accolades like a Grammy or an American Music Award mm. easily because you know that she's she, got that, a fan base now yeah, as well. That, like four million Twitter followers. Too. Hello, she has a fan base, but you can't outbeat Drake. And, and Kendra mm, true, Lamar true. and people like that's come on, man. True. You know why? They're gonna be on the level that is. Yeah, whoa, it's, it's like, too where can like, get she, there now? Yeah, she, she has her crowds, but she still does pop. So you know, it's like a give or take. You know, she's gonna win. 
you know, she's going to win. They're going to give her those type of, and people are going to backlash and, and feel some type of way about her success because they're going to feel like she hasn't worked as hard mm. as a Nikki or, you know, uh, you know anybody else who's in that lane. So, okay. you know, it's, it's just difficult. But, you know, I think she's a dope-ass artist, but and I know exactly what she can do. She, you know, like, remember how Nikki on her, what, second album maybe, mm. tried to go do spaceships and shit yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah, the whole pop sort of vibe from that. She can go do that shit and she can jump on a track with T.I. and and then she'll be, and still she'll be, be praised like Beyonce or some shit. Kanye West? Uh, genius. Okay, Mr. Play? Uh, friend. Okay, uh, Chris Brown? Uh, Michael Jackson. Ooh, wow. Okay. Of our time. Hold up. Pop a band, pop a band. Throw up, throw up, another rat. You know? If a booty flat, ass shots, I pay for that. Turn up. How so fucking big like where my name is at? Hit the floor, white T, go Jerry and a Falcon hat. Push, 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 so 